Hi, thanks for watching Aquarium Tech today. Uh, today I was going to do uh, another video to add to the lighting series. For those of you that don't know, some of the newer viewers that maybe haven't seen some of my old, older videos, uh, I basically started so something called the lighting series, and uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna, just using it to kind of organize my videos a little bit, maybe uh, try to sometime in the future if it gets to that point. And uh, basically, what I have in it, it what, I, what I'm doing with it, is basically going over, doing general overviews of like the different lighting types, you know, like T5s, LEDs, metal halides, uh, that sort of thing. And then I'm also doing lighting parameters, you know, and, and so with this info, you, you know, like lux, lumens, uh, color temperature, stuff like that. And so, and so basically, you know, you can kind of learn about the lights themselves and actually learn what, why certain lights are good you know not just that certain lights are good or bad you know actually learn why and learn how to pick them out yourself so you know I still answer questions and everything I'm not going to tell you to go watch the other videos even though I'm not going to say you shouldn't because you should uh, but uh, you know that's probably a good idea that way you know you can make your own decisions so. anyways so I've been wanting to do a video on PAR for a very long time, uh, and especially uh, you saltwater guys out there. That's I know, I know that's definitely some, something important to you. Uh, it, you you got any of you guys that have been on a saltwater forum, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyways, so before I go to PAR, I kind of realized that we probably I should probably make a video on the nanometer range or what's what I like to call spectrum alright I think that's what most people call it spectrum so uh, but you know spectrum is a general word it could be used for anything but when it comes to aquatics and lighting you know what I'm talking about so anyways spectrum is basically uh, vi visible light done in uh, nanometers like there's color temperature to kind of judge the color of the light kind of uh, then there's it, it, it's basically visible light in nanometers to kind of use like wavelengths. Uh, something to kind of compare this to that might help you understand is like when you learned about like radio waves and stuff in school. Uh, like they have those little uh, charts and stuff. You know, the, they might have radio waves over here. You know, radio waves have very long, uh, non-active waves. You know, they're, they're they're long wavelengths, and you know they don't really interfere with anything really. You know, then you go higher and higher on the scale to microwaves where it's actually, you know, damaging to humans and stuff. And it's a lot more active particles and stuff. Uh, you know, it has a lot higher frequency. The wavelength is a lot shorter. And then you go up to gamma rays, which is even higher, which is, you know, deadly. And, uh, you know, even more active particles and uh, stuff like that. So, and it's basically the same thing with the uh, uh, nanometer range. All right. Uh, and, and like, so they use nanometers to measure the wavelength. Basically, it, it, it's it's the same it's the same exact concept, same exact thing. That you, you know, the the longer the 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 bigger the nanometer number, that means the lower the frequency. All right, you know, like like for instance, in, infrared is kind of I, I have a scale right here. Infrared is kind of you know like let's say 800 nanometers. That this is the visible light range. So it's it's usually about a red color, dark red color, and that's 800 uh, nanometers. So it's not a very active. Uh, it's not a very active. Uh, or, or I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it, it's not very active for light. It's basically on the lower end of the light spectrum. All right. And then where you go up to like the color of your UV bulbs, which is a lot more active. You know th that's the whole concept behind the UV sterilizers is that. It, it, the wavelengths that the, that the light puts off is actually damaging, you know, that's why they tell you not to look at it, uh, the bulb directly, you know, they always have those little indicator things that, so you don't have to look at the bulb, that's because it's damaging, and that's why it kills the bacteria and algae and stuff in your water, because, you know, it's, it's sending those highly active uh, particles with a high frequency uh, at life forms and everything in there, and it's basically sterilizing it. So, and that's basically the principle for UV sterilizers. And you know that that's that's obviously uh, 
you know, I, I guess you would say higher on the spectrum, you know, has, has a higher frequency, but lower nanometers, you know, like that, like, uh, says on here, it'd be like, probably like a purplish color, and, you know, that's like 400 uh, nanometers, as opposed to the infrared range, which is like red, and the 800 nanometers. All right, and that's obviously, the higher is obviously going to be UV, you know, the, the, the purple, blue, is the, the ultraviolet range is what they call it. So, and, and obviously that's going to, and I'll go over this one more time to make sure we understand this here. You got your infrared over here, which is going to have a longer wavelength, shorter frequency, okay? And then you'll have your UV with your higher frequency and lower wavelength. And remember, the wavelength is in nanometers, okay? So, it's actually pretty easy to kind of understand. So, and this kind of coincides with PAR, which is what I was saying I am going to, you know, do this video. And that's kind of, that, that's pretty much it for explaining what it is. Now, how it correlate, correlates to aquarium lighting, uh, usually that's not something you look too in-depth at, you know, you... It kind of, like I said, it kind of coincides with PAR. Most people just look at PAR or PER. Uh, but basically, you know, the nanometer range, you, you know, a lot of people look at it to see like this, what, what, this, what this, the, the spikes are in certain bulbs, obviously, because you're obviously going to have spikes with different color temperatures. All right, so different spikes in, in the... Uh, in the nanometer range, which can correlate to, uh, you, you know, better or worse growth, you know, depending on the on the situation there. Like usually, uh, uh, or, or that's why sometimes you can even hear about too much actinic lighting and stuff, like uh, bleaching corals. If, if you've ever heard of that before, uh, that can happen because usually the it has a wavelength, a higher, or I'm sorry, a higher frequency that spikes and it, and it can be a little too high or, or just too much of it and and there's not a lot of useful uh, per se spectrum in there for uh, life so that, that, that's why they say uh, you know like the 6500k bulbs are, are are really good for plants and, and even for for uh, you know shallow corals and stuff you, usually the only reason you go to the higher color temperatures you know because you want to try to simulate the environment as you go down in the ocean you know, it, it, it gets bluer, obviously, and that's why the lights get bluer, so. And, and like I said, this is this was going to be a short video, so that, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, if you want more information on it, I, if you really do, I can probably do a more specific video. Uh, that's about it. Uh, it's, it's just a pretty general video, like I said it was going to be. I'll be adding more to the lighting series here. Hopefully, hopefully this video will help help us get in gear for what's to come on the lighting series. So I guess that's about it for today. If you have any questions, get shout, ugh, shoot me a PM. Thanks for tuning in.